We are back with two aqua tweeds. These are actually they're both from Linton and the back one, the one hanging at the back is also from Linton, but they're from very different times. The back one's the most recent and I think this was the earliest one, this 3D one. I have this in a couple of different colorways. This one is gorgeous, very oceanic. And then this one was from a few years back as well. Oh, look how well those shoulders are put in. Absolutely gorgeous. And I've got it turned to the back because of this ridiculously long fringe. I still haven't trimmed it. It's easier to put it in and then trim off the excess. So I did actually have enough of leftover fabric to use as the fringe. So I was originally going to do that. But then I realized, um, see in the tweed, there's this sort of sky blue and white um, yarn. And I've got it in the greeny aqua. And um, when it goes from aqua to white, it sort of has a, that sort of fluoro, pastel fluoro green. I don't know what that color's called, but I call it pastel fluoro green. And yeah, it has that in it. So I use that. And I also have this sort of, well, it's not a flagged yarn, but it, it looks flagged from far away and it's got the same colors in it. So yeah, I use that. And this has the tiniest, smallest amounts of silver in it. And so I sort of, I had this silver yarn. I was like, right, we'll just add that in. And then I also add some, added in some um, little bunches of just cotton thread. So I didn't buy them from the, as yarn. I just, that's just thread I had. And I was like, ooh, could use more of this color. So we just, yeah, put in bunches of it. And I don't know, I really like it. I think it's a bit thin. Normally I like a, a fringe that's at least twice as thick as that, but I don't know. It sort of reminded me of seaweed and ocean waves, you know, when you sort of get stuck under the ocean, under a wave and seaweed sort of floats by on a crashing wave. I don't know, that's what I was thinking of. So yeah, I like that it's sort of stringy and gappy relative to the other fringes that I do. And if you're wondering why I do fringe on the bottom but not on the um, cuffs and not on the, you know, the neckline and the front of the jacket, it's because I don't like any of those. And be, once the beading's on, it does balance out. And I don't know, I just really love fringe. I think it's fabulous, but I'm a writer. So I just can't have fussy things on my cuffs. And also I'm not great with wool. It sort of agitates my skin sometimes, depending on what, even if it's like the the most eco-friendly dyes. I think my skin just does not like wool. So yeah, and fringe is of course, well, not in this particular case, but usually it's all basically all wool. And um, yeah, so I just, I don't like the fussiness. I don't like getting itchy at the neck and the, and the wrists. So I just, and I'm making it so I can make it how I want. So yeah. That's why my fringe is very specific. And I like that it kind of looks like a grass skirt. I don't know. I like the juxtaposition, I guess, between a formal, you know, casual formal, um, you know, that Parisian look of the Chanel jacket is so proper. And that mixed with like a cute little kid's tutu almost. I don't know. I think it's fun. So yeah, I don't do it on every jacket. There's probably only five or maybe 10 all up that have it, but yeah, I think it's fun. Just something different to wear every now and again. And then this one, 
Oh, the beading on this one is so heavy. It's on a cream base, which looks good. And then I did these crisscrosses with the long gold bugle beads, if you can see. And, and that sort of gave the thing integrity. And then I sort of built up all the other beads around it. But um, I want to redo it because, well, I'm better at doing beading now. But also, I really don't like these ivory and light gold ones in there. I finally have bought other fabrics where that I could actually use them. So I'll use them in that. Because in this one, I was just going, sort of using them up for the sake of using them up. And that's always wrong. Should just keep stuff <laughs> until you buy another tweed and use them on that. Also, I used to do tulle over the top of my beading, and it's really bunchy in this one on the corners, and I just cannot stand it. It's protecting the beads, so it, it's serving its purpose, but aesthetically, no, I don't like it. And also, like, the beads are just so heavy on this that they sort of warp the way the jacket sits and um, beading should never do that so yeah i just want to take it off and redo it properly and as good as these extra long gold bugle beads are for the structure like to keep everything sort of at the right angle and everything it's sort of because jackets have to go on people and they have to bend um bugle beads that are that long don't bend so yeah when they go around the side of me it's yeah it just doesn't sit right so yeah I need to redo it I didn't think of that when I was doing it and um as soon as I put it on I'm like wow this one's extra boxy <laughs> so yeah I need to fix that sort of take them out and do it again better but yeah in general i like the gold on that one it's very pretty so yeah that's what i'm playing oh and on this one i'll probably just do the these colors here pick up the colors of the i was thinking about um silver and white but mm, i like mixing the color of these the fringe and the color of the jacket and just yeah making it a little bit colorful so that's what i'm going to do and redo on those two jackets <laughs>